Greetings, it's um, October 19th, we're here in Ithaca, New York. Uh, Brian Keeler here with Warren Greenwood. Warren's uh, doing an article for the uh, Ithaca Times, a local uh, weekly newspaper here. I'm a cartoonist and a writer. Formerly from California, but originally <laughs> from upstate New York. So uh, Warren's <laughs> gonna ask me about my current show here at the uh, Titus Gallery in uh, Ithaca, New York. It just opened on October 7th and goes to uh, November 30th, uh, 2011. And it's called called Lake Light. It's all about uh, Ithaca and the uh, region around here, with a couple of figure paintings and a couple of pieces of Maine to uh, round out the um, the show. Uh, most of them are uh, plein air, um, which means done on location. But uh, there's a number of them that are also studio paintings. So uh, Warren's gonna ask me some questions. <laughs> well, I'll make, I'll make an observation. Um, one thing that struck me about Brian's work is. It doesn't fit in any known category. It's it's a bit like there's an element of super realism. It's a little like impressionism, but it's not impressionism. And there's a kind of a a hopped up hyper awareness, a bit like Van Gogh's work, where Van Gogh arrived at a kind of altered state of consciousness via schizophrenia. But um, there's that kind of Hyper awareness, so it, it's almost a mixture of those three things. You know, like uh, it, it struck me that Brian's work, to, to my way of thinking, there's no known category for it. But but I see those three things kind of, kind of uh, coming into it. You want to respond to that one? <laughs> uh, well, uh, so hopefully we can do it uh, in a circuitous way or a more direct way than Van Gogh. Uh, but uh, I do have affinities for the neo impressionist, which is what uh, Van Gogh was considering, and uh, the uh, the Fauvist painters and. Uh, other painters of more traditional uh, ilk, like Corot, and uh, uh, painters who uh, accentuated perspective, like Vermeer and Brunelleschi, the, uh, uh, the Italian uh, Renaissance painters uh, after Brunelleschi. So there's a variety of influences here. But it, I think it's a distinctly um, American type of uh, imagery that I've uh, kind of focused on. And uh, so the uh, effect is uh, you know, portraying uh, America and uh, uh, our region of the Northeast uh, United States here. Yeah, that uh, we were looking at, at this painting uh, over here. If you, can you get it in your uh, your photo? We were talking about that because because um, Brian referenced um, Vermeer when I uh, when I first saw it and we were chatting, and I referenced Thomas Hart Benton, who's one of my favorite paintings, and Benton is so. Uh, American, so hyper American, and I, w I was just saying to Brian, it's a little like um, if Benton was was capturing America circa 1930. We, we see Brian here sort of capturing it in tw in 2010. You know, here in the future, <laughs> the 21st century. Yeah, that's a, an interesting uh, comment <clears throat> because that's one of the things that I like to do is to kind of update the uh, the paintings. Take uh, uh, none of these particular. Uh, that style, but I'll take ancient myths and update them and make them Ooh. contemporary, and uh, sort of like Greek, Roman Greek uh, myths, and uh, make them uh, uh, relevant to today. Like even this one that I'm uh, uh, relating to, Vermeer, has that kind of effect. Like mm -hmm. you said, it has a distinct uh, quality of uh, America today, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. a contemporary look. And so that's what I'm doing: is sort of taking these traditions and then uh, re uh, reconfiguring them, if you will. Okay. okay, the most, I'll try to cover this quickly. It's, this is the most important thing th that I felt about Brian's paintings, and it's really hard to put into words. Um, but I found something really compelling abro about uh, Brian's paintings of upstate New York and Pennsylvania. I might even just focus right, right on painting. This is a, a really perfect example of it. And um, this particular one is of. Um, Cuca Lake, which is just north of Hammondsport, and it's one that I did uh, right on location. In fact, I did it right from the uh, tailgate of my truck. It was done in early June, and I sat right there and did it uh, maybe 60 to 80 percent of it uh, on location, and then finished it up in the studio. It's called plein air painting. And I thought. A nasty person could argue that, oh, Warren, you're just, this is just nostalgia you're feeling because you grew up in upstate New York, you were gone for almost 30 years living in L.A. and Southern California. But I think, I think it's more than that. And I had this insight in the shower, and I'll try to, to simplify it. Uh, it's, um, oh, 
while he's looking for that, I, I could explain about uh, this one. Uh, it's a view of um, Cuyuga, Cayuga Lake here in Ithaca, New York at the Boat Club. And uh, I did some studies. For example, this one right here was done uh, after a kayak trip. And so I, I did that one on location. But this larger one up here is an example of a studio painting. And, and this has an example of perspective that I was talking about. This perspective was, was quite... Um, uh, involved to get this docked to work right, but the, the quality of the light and the atmosphere and uh, the uh, just the uh, warmth of the late afternoon was what I was trying to portray mm -hmm. there. And we talked about your dramatic use of perspective. That you, I was saying your, your, your use of perspective is so dead on and assured that you can use it for dramatic effects. This is quite a, a good example of, uh, of doing that. Did you find your... Yeah, I did. Um, <clears throat> what I was... What I was saying was, I think it would be foolish to dismiss what I'm trying to describe as nostalgia. It has more to do with um, growing up somewhere in a certain landscape in, in some part of planet Earth and loving it. Uh, loving the landscape you're in. On some level, um, just living there, you grasp on a deep level how beautiful it is and how fortunate you are to be alive in, in, this, this, uh, in this place on the planet. And then what Brian does is capture that, uh, to, be, to be able to capture that in art is, is really, I think, a sublime thing. And I think it requires a kind of condensation or exaggeration or a little bit of hopping up of reality. Um, and an ability to absorb the beauty and transmute it to to transfer it through the force of one's personality. In other words, um, one's unique point of view. Uh, out of all the seven billion people on Earth, we're all, each one, Ray Bradbury said we're all preposterously unique. But I think what I'm getting at, the insight I had was, oh, it's like you're able to take that beauty and kind of run it through your personality as a human being and then make an art about it and then, and then when another person experiences that art, whether it's music or writing or painting, that's, um, that's, a, that's a sublime thing. That's almost like holy work. <laughs> yeah, we probably better wrap it up. I thought I'd just have you look through here, Matt, at this last one to finish up on, if you can see this one. It was also a plein air painting. It's uh, looking towards Cornell on the, uh, one of the inlets, mm. and I did that sitting there, right there on location. That's an oil painting. Okay, um, so um, you can, uh, you can sign off here now. Oh, so uh, thanks so much for your attention, and uh, uh, that's, that'll be it. Thanks. <laughs> that's not bad. We managed to get it in the...